It's all good. Colleen's got coffee. <laughs> Welcome to episode 34 of the Great Northern Sexcast. Colleen, what's up? Uh, you know, it, it, it's a pretty calm week. You know, really? we're, we're looking we're looking for employees. You know that you know in retail things go you know change a lot. Uh, doing some maintenance at the stores, uh, gardening, uh, getting uh, merchandise in. You know. I, I need to, you know, I'll knock on something wood somewhere, um, but, you know, it's just, it's nice. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's just, cool. I don't, now, mind you, I'm pretty sure eyes are rolling from Megan over here. <laughs> she's got to deal with the day-to-day -day stuff, but I'm dealing with, you know, with other people's stuff. Yeah. You know, like switching over bank accounts and, and stuff like that. You know. But, I don't know, going along. Yeah. Well, you guys just—you guys just got through Christmas in July. Wasn't last month kind of gnarly because you had to get ready for Christmas? Well, you have to decide what you're going to get, what you're going to order. You got to sort through everything. We're trying—you know—I discovered that uh, that you know, replacing a few pieces of slat wall and painting ends up being replacing all the slat wall, oh, and changing yeah. us some you know, little things. And this week it was like. So far, I mean, my kids Tuesday. <laughs> There's plenty of time for everything to go to hell, Colleen. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I call it the two by four. It's waiting for it. It's going fine. And then you just get smacked upside the head. And you're like, okay, oh, now I got something else to deal with. Well, why can't you hear out of one ear? Oh, um, just water in my ear. I'm special. Oh. Because I've, I've been deaf in my right ear my entire life. So I'm like, yeah, you know, I get that. But it's, it's like, weird, isn't it? It is very weird. weird. Yeah. Do, do you have any balance? Issues? Are you d dizzy? No. No. Okay. Yeah. It's just, it's very it's very strange, and I'm used to it because I can only like say special mono. You're just in mono today. She's in mono, <laughs> and that's by the way is Miss Megan Vaughn. Welcome yeah. back. I said mono when I was a senior, and I told everyone else that down in Texas and have a good time over spring break. And I'm seriously considering not whether or not I'm going to wet the bed. I'm so exhausted. Really? <laughs> I've never had it. Have oh, you ever had it? No, no. Oh, it is. I, I, I keep my kiss on myself. To this, <laughs> to, this, to this day, I compare all other illnesses to that week. No kidding. It, it was, you only had it a week? Yeah, well, that, that was when the girl was just out. Okay. Just out. And like spring break, senior year, friends are down in, in Galveston, Texas, or friends are all over the place. You know, no one's going to get in trouble like people do now. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. But it's going to be Yeah. yeah. You know, but it, it's given me this. Base point for what really freaking miserable is. No, I know there's lots of other stuff out there, but for, for your basic progress, it's not really good. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's weird. They've been running this completely random. But, you know, mono is widely thought of as a young person's affliction. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I mean, I suppose anybody can get it, but they've been running those ads on TV for um, meningitis. Have you seen those? The, the, it's like a public service annou right. uh, announcement mm -hmm. about revaccinating your teenagers mm -hmm. um, for, for, because I mean, I knew somebody that got that and almost died and he's fine now but I mean it was like it really it seriously I mean do you as a parent I mean do you get barraged with all the stuff to do to your kid and is it hard to decide oh no there's no decision it's done okay sorry yeah no 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 I'm just you know some people are funny about that stuff I know I know you know and I, and, um, but I will, uh, to me the not doing it is so much worse than the possible anything that yeah yeah and uh, so no, it's Everything. Because I'm, I'm myself, I'm like, can I get some of this stuff? Whatever they want is the shingles mix. Um, but you can't get you like over 60. And I'm thinking, you know, I, I know plenty of people under 60 who's managed to get shingles. Really? But I guess these shots are like $300, but I don't want to pay for it. And I'm like, I suppose I could, you know, chuck out $300. But no, yeah. I don't Got a shot here. Here's my damn arm. Oh, <laughs> I did not know this about you. Um, well, you know, before we, before I forget, now that Megan's here, because I haven't, Megan, we haven't seen you on the show here in a, in a bit, because one of the reasons is I know you were interviewing people. Because, like, yes. Colleen said, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I'm just, can you just give me a little snippet of um, of how the interviews have been going and anything fine? Because when when my boyfriend's sister, who is a, a pretty high up at Macy's, I mean, would, she comes back with the best interview stories. And if that's just for a department store, what the hell do you uncover? <laughs> I'm just curious. Well, first of all, someone has to show up. Let, oh, let's right. get past that point. Oh, really? There are so, really are there a lot of jobs out there. Right? I think that's the biggest problem is I don't have any crazy stories except for I scheduled five interviews, one person showed up. That's crazy. amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. So you tell me about the recession and no one has jobs. <laughs> There's been a few. I've done some uh, done some interviewing uh, myself, and you, you're pretty much trying to find someone who is comfortable around in our product without being scary about being comfortable around. Right. Yeah. Product. There's a That's fine a good line, point. And, 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 it's, and you're just trying to figure you know, out, and, and it's a conversation to see how someone's going to deal with the fact that a perfect stranger is going to tell you something very personal, mm -hmm. and how you respond to that means a lot. I always bust out a big, you know, like, so how would you feel talking to a guy about his erection? Mm -hmm. Talking to a guy about his penis, a woman about her vagina, and just see the look on her face. Yeah. Um, and there's a fine line, like you said, between being excited about the job and way too excited about the job. I'm like, if you're this excited, you have the wrong idea about what this job entails. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I'm, I'm sure, you know, mm -hmm. that there's got to be, like, what, what are some of the things that you ask, um, Colleen? Just well, I, just, I, just, um, I ask if you're, well, you know, what, are you comfortable about, you know, handling cash, you okay. know, money, stuff like that. Can you give, um, I, I bought something the other day, uh, I was buying some cat food, and I handed the person actual money, and the child behind the counter was unable to count back oh my the God. money to me. Oh yeah. So I'd like to know that someone is a bit, you know, understands cash, you know, that or, or, or going through there. Um, are you going to be? Uh, I, I like folks that have worked at uh, like a dry cleaner store because people expect miracles at dry cleaner store and they get, you know, you know, you just, you know are, are you interesting. Are, okay. Are, yeah. You just are, do you have? Um, I really like uh, you know, it's a whole bunch of employees have been ex military mm -hmm. because they're really good. Huh. Yeah, so, yeah. Interesting. Tell them what to do when they do it. <laughs> That's always <laughs> the know how to clean. <laughs> That's funny. You know, because I don't expect uh, if, if if no one's in the store and the store's in good shape, I don't expect this. I it drove me insane when I've had part-time jobs. So I've had people bring in a drunk a uh, little table drum kit and work on it, and end up working for um, uh, a couple of musicians in town, having folks work on their homework. I mean, I'm fine. But if I go into the store and find dust on a mannequin stand, then I'm going to be crazy. Right, right. So just, you know, not, you know, you know being proactive and you know about things. Yeah. And stuff like that. You know, just being, you know, pleasant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's yeah. sales. It's a sales job. Yeah. I mean, yes, they are personal toys, but it's still a sales job. You know, retail can, I mean, the last time I worked actual retail, um, I actually, when I went back to broadcast school when I was 30, okay, um, I actually ran an Oric store. In fact, it was their highest producing store in the country, the one in Minnetonka. What's your name? Oric, vacuums. Oh, Oric. I okay. sold vacuums. You guys, I had an absolute riot on that job. I mean, absolutely hysterical because, you know, they're expensive. So the people that were coming in were usually you know, pretty cool, you know, um, well-educated and stuff, and you throw crap on the floor and vacuum it up, and, you know, I mean, I just, I really got into it because it was something to do, and I accidentally made a boatload of money this doing it. Huh? I sold vacuums to houses. Did you? I worked in the chat department, but I would be put in the housewares department every now and then. Yeah. And then one day I was over there, and they had a vacuum sale, and I'm like, okay, let's find out about the vacuums. I, as a sub, I sold a ton of vacuums that day. Yeah. Because I just yeah, yeah. I mean, it's really amusing how 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 passionate some people are about cleaning, mm -hmm. you know, and and the things that really bug them, you know. And so it's just it's kind of like with you, it's like uncovering. Okay, what's your issue? What are you trying to deal with? And yeah. this would be the same thing. It can be fun. Yeah, no, yeah. My, my dad was definitely a salesman. Yeah. And I think I you know picked that up. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I had restaurant jobs, and then I had a lot of sales jobs, and then of course you know family job, and it's sales. Yeah. Like I said, I don't care if it's a little involved or, or whether it's a label vibrator. You need to know everything about that product. Yeah. Well, so so you guys are still looking for people. Let's just put it out there. Yeah. Yes, we are. We're, we're hiring a quickly. Sounds like we're Burns and Lake. Well, yeah. Sometimes okay. you're going back to school. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. Uh, the folks had to move. Uh, we think, you know, a few things, you know, are, are you know, coming up. And so we're like, you know, it's just, it just the life of retail. Yep, mm -hmm. but it's a, you got, obviously you're a great company. So um, if you know anybody, uh, get in touch with us through the Great Northern Sex Cast here on Facebook. Speaking of the change thing, can I just tell you? I can't believe you brought that up because this morning, I went, um, I did my my exercise walk and I ran to get some grapefruit at a grocery store, and a, a couple in front of me was buying a watermelon. Okay, 
and they had the audacity. First of all, they had to count out their money. I'm talking like stacks of change. And I'm, I'm, I hadn't had my coffee yet. So it was like 6.15 in the morning. So I'm starting to get impatient. When the child behind the counter whipped out her iPhone and got the calculator function to figure out the change, I went to the self checkout. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Seriously. Well, I, I, I made sure, and I still do it every now and then, if I'm you know, someplace I'm, that I will make my daughter take the money out of my purse. You know, well, I mean, she loved it when she was a kid. She, you know, yeah. she groans at me, but I made her do it. I said, funny. you will know how to count that change. Yeah. No yeah. It's mm -hmm. not how, you know, currency. It's, it's huge. Thing. I mean, <laughs> and, 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 you know, and there are some things that are sort of like, uh, you know, uh, things running around like, you know, why do you say hang up the phone? Nobody hangs up the phone, you know, to some extent. I mean, some kids don't even know that my mom always had it, you know, on my phone or something like that. Sure. But other things, you just you still need, you know, counting back money is, you know, it's not going away anytime soon. Right. Mm. Right. No matter how much Apple is trying, I, I you know. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna make us pay for. I was afraid where you said that it was going to come out of, but okay. No, Apple hasn't touched that market yet. Oh, God. That's a good thing. That's a beautiful thing. Did you guys see the story um, about uh, the fellow down in North Carolina that um, was proposing to his girlfriend at a restaurant? And did you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, this was quite something. Took her to his favorite Mexican restaurant, and a robbery started, became under in, in progress. And he literally, I'm sorry, honey, like from the knee, I get, getting up to go help them apprehend the dude, and then, you know, go back. It all turned out well, but, well, they're going to have something to tell their kids, you think? <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, I can tell that she did, in fact, say yes. Yes. Just, mm -hmm. you know, yes. Yeah. Not only is he down on his knee, being traditional chauffeurs, he just goes and, like, saves people from that, and then he comes back. And I guess it was like, now where was that? Like, so he also has a sense of humor. So that's the part of, I like this guy. He's definitely <laughs> a humor, for sure. Yeah. But that I imagine, like, puppies springing out of his pocket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's, he, he was kind of, you know, he, and he probably knows how to make a really good puppy. Yeah, he's kind of hunky. Yeah. He, well, I haven't seen a picture. Oh, he's a good looking guy. Yeah, oh, big dude, you know. Yeah. That, well, the, the beginning is going very well, so if they can maintain yeah. it, that'd be great. Well, I mean, you know, talk about you know um, chivalry, man. I mean, seriously, mm -hmm. woo, it's alive. I love it. It is so excited. I'm so excited, guys. I was really surprised about some stuff. I'm, you know, I'm not a big plastic surgery, you know, hound, but I, I was okay. The big butt thing, okay, Kim Kardashian, and all of that kind of stuff. Butt enhancement has far surpassed, I mean, breast augmentation is way down, butt enhancement is up, and labioplasty are making leaps and bounds. Yeah, I know that a lot of people, I mean, okay, um, in Brazil is, I think, where the blood stuff started, because there's a whole evening uh, um, beach stuff down there. Besides, sewage, to me, look, it's water, that's a whole A lot of bums, a lot of bums. Um, you know, you just don't... And I can understand not wanting to have a saggy ass, but I'm pretty sure that if you do squats, <laughs> you're not going to But I suppose if you're genetic, I mean, if you truly don't have an ass, mm -hmm. and there are people who truly don't have an yeah, ass. Yeah, there are those people. I have no ass. I have the Irish apple shaped. No Wait, ass. So would you consider plugging the uh, place? No, I wouldn't. No. <laughs> I mean, I don't have a judgment like about if somebody you know wants to look better and all of that kind of stuff. But I do. I'm freaky about implanting stuff in my body that doesn't belong there. Definitely. Well, and especially with the butt implants, it seems so much more possibility of something going wrong. Or in my head, I'm just imagining you sit down too hard. And pop them. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Oh. You get a lot more wear and tear on your butt. But yeah. You know that's yeah, a good yeah. point. I mean, Walking and you're sitting, and there's a lot more, a lot more movement. But, but, but. <laughs> <laughs> and it just deflates, and then you get it. Oh, <laughs> you know, you know. I, I know um, a friend of mine's uh, ex-wife who they were a very, very bad place right before their divorce when this happened. But one of her boob implants popped mm. and deflated. I mean, that can't happen. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I, I can see that. Yeah, I'm not really. I, I really, you just, I don't have an issue with folks that want to do something, but I think. If you're doing it for you, that's fine. If you're doing it for someone else, 
content than that, you know, that's going through there. I mean, to really look at why you're doing something, uh, you know, you know, like, and, and, and it goes down. I mean, you know, I love my fake nails. I do them for me. They look very nice. I was noticing your mani, by <laughs> so the way. So it looks great. No, I mean, but I'm not going to pass it off as these are my nails. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, that, you know, it, it, and, and plenty of people, uh, you know, it's okay, like, if, if it's going to make you fit better into the world that you live in, and it's going to make you not, you know, if you keep obsessing, you know, yeah. 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 This just shows that it's a trend. Oh, yeah. You know, I wouldn't want to permanently. I say this with tattoos and piercings, so I guess there's a bit of a frame of salt there <laughs> to permanently augment your body because of the fashion trend. Mm -hmm. What happens five years from now, everyone's like Kim Kardashian, and then big butts aren't popular anymore. It just goes in cycles. So yeah, yeah. You do have to do it for yourself, and not because of societal standards that will constantly be changing. For sure. Well, listen, listen to some of these numbers. This is like, this is shocking. I was like really surprised here. So, um, the American Society of Plastic Surgeons says that um, out of survey of almost a thousand doctors, silicone implants for the rear end nearly doubled nationwide between 13 and 14. And then um, there's a less invasive operation uh, that transplants fat. Um, that one's called the Brazilian. That rose 15%. Um, but a lot more of those were done, 11,000 versus like um, 1,800 of the other, the actual implants. Then a different professional group, about 900 um, doctors strong, said um, that their numbers showed a doubling of both of those two types of uh, augmentation. They were doing um, 21,500 in 2014, over 13. So I thought... And that's just the bump. That's not the the, 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 the women that are uh, messing with the media. Oh no, I haven't gotten to them yet. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh no, they've got numbers. But I had there's a Miami guy who said butt augmentation used to be ten percent of his practice. It's now ninety five percent. He must be really good at it and have gotten a, a following. But yeah. yeah. Really, if I was going to have my ass and hands, I want somebody who knows what they're doing. Yes. So right. you got to go to the top ass. Mm -hmm. Yes. Definitely. It would be nice, I imagine, like a fine hands. But Falling down. <laughs> 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 got nothing that holds anything up. So I guess in that way it's a better yeah, so yeah, this is not my this is not my issue. <laughs> <laughs> Trying plus size with no curves. <laughs> the um the another lady, she's uh head of the American College of Obstetrician and Gynecologist, she said, you know, the reason the labiaplasties are, are rising, she, this is her theory is that the Brazilian waxing, those Brazilians, man, we've, we've really finally, you know, so we can see what's going on. And, and they're starting to look, and they don't want sloppy skin down there. Which, you know what, that's an aging thing. And I, I'd be like, yeah, okay, I, I can almost see that, you know? What are you, uh, Colleen, you're thinking. I, I didn't think because I'm just like, it's not that I'm unaware of what, you know, female body parts look at, but I can't imagine that at any point. I'm just trying to figure out where someone's brain is, where they can look at their labia and see something that looks. I want it to be tighter. I, yeah, but you know, it just it's not. I mean, I can look and say I can't fit into clothing, or my 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 boobs are too big, so I'm going to have some taken out, or I, I'm a chest with nipples, and I want to be able to you know feel more female. Yeah. But I mean, in general, your labia just are out there on display. But you have to like your labia. Yeah, I, guess, I, I, guess, I, mean, I guess that truly goes back to the point where you're, you must be doing it for yourself. Because, yeah. yeah. I think it's, it's actually kind of sad, honestly. I mean, first of all, where are they finding the standard of what a beautiful labia Like, what labia is like the model of all yeah, labia? The Marilyn yes. Monroe yes. of labia? Yes. Because yes. yes. you can say, I want this person's nose or this or that. You know, there's a whole bunch of, there's a note chart. I'm sure there's a chip chart. Is there a labia? Sure. Well, that's what I was going to say. When I think of when I, we go to, we get all, all our fleshlights in that are modeled after adult stars. We've got yep. like 15 different vaginas displayed on the box, and they all look different. So I suppose you could take in a fleshlight and be like, I would like the Jessica Drake lady, you know? I suppose. But it's, I mean, small, big, floppy, you know, the, what's the term, roast beef, meat curtains, it's all, they're so different that I how suppose, do you decide what's good and what's not? I 
But I suppose if you're wandering, you know, it's a discussion we had earlier, and I mean, it's not like, you know, only men can get their junk caught in the seams of their underwear. You know, if something shifts, <laughs> right. Right. something right. shifts. If you're it's zipping it up. up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my you're constantly God. getting it, you know, it's getting snagged between the jeans and the, and the you know, and the fall, you know, maybe. I don't know. It's not like, you know, I just think there's enough ways that we junk them and keep their ladies up. <laughs> well put, and you know, the uh, this Dr. Barbara Levy agrees with you. She The quote from her said, it's one more body part that we as women are being told to be insecure about, which I thought was kind of an interesting comment. But I don't know, I just was amazed. Um, they, they had a 49% increase in the number of women getting that surgery in 2000, year over year, 2013 to 14. So I thought that was kind of interesting here for the, uh, the uh, sex test. So, okay, I actually put a lot of the show together Sunday afternoon this week, and um, I came across this story, and I just, you know how sometimes you just, you kind of just put yourself in it, and you just lose it? I mean, I literally was laughing so hard, and Carl was trying to ask me what was funny, and I'm standing at the bar where I, where I work, laughing so hard, and I couldn't even spit it out to tell him, and I'm just pointing at the computer screen. Well, then he gets tickled. Because I can't even talk. I'm laughing so hard. And now that I've said that, nobody's going to think what I'm about to say is funny. But, yeah, you got to be careful to set up. But, but I did. I just, okay. So in Norway, there's this golf club. And um, I can't pronounce it, okay? Just FYI. Um, it's this crazy um, name. And this, it's called the NGG. It's regional. But yeah, right? And it's, it's a heritage golf club there. And it, uh, they, they had this guy cereal crapping in the cups on the green for like 10 years, okay? And, and now the quotes from the article are what just literally put me over the edge. One of, one of the ground teams, yes, he has some favorite holes. And, and, then, and then they're talking about how they can't get a permit. I guess in Norway you have to have a permit to install video cameras, surveillance, so they can't get one. So they've been trying to use motion detectors, like, but he disables them. He goes up, he gets up behind them. So sneak tack on the motion detectors, goes and takes a dump in the cup. And I mean, I'm just thinking about, and it's been going on for years, okay? So the, so did they, is it an, is it an offense? I mean, can you, could they, I mean, I mean, I suppose they could stake it out. I mean, they, <laughs> well, I sp yeah, but I think they're about ready to do that. <laughs> But, but I mean, they, they find it. I mean, it's like it's ongoing. And so finally, the thing that did it for me was <laughs> the, the club manager said, you know, he could be mentally ill. And I'm, I'm picturing this all happening with Norwegian accents, too, okay, which also increases the hilarity for me. Um, he could have a, a, a mental illness or he could have a fetish. But he says, or we, we wondered more than once if he's a person that just really seriously hates the game of golf. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty much where I was like, you know, if it's, if it's a club, maybe, you know, they're looking at people they didn't allow in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Back 10 years, see, they rejected it. Oh, God. I just about... Go ahead. Some of you just, you know, someone craps in a golf course, and I'm like, that was fun, I want to do it again. Yeah, <laughs> for 10 years? For 10 years. I like that. People are crazy. This, and the fact that no one's been up. And, and at what point did someone have to come up and go, wait a minute? You know, because I, I would think the second time that someone crapped on the golf course, then you would, you know, obviously, you know, so like, oh, you can't put up cameras or because of the rules, but you'd have, you would figure it out in more than 10 years. You think? <laughs> And the, and the media calls him the series kiter, which translates ser into serial shitter. So he's a media darling, too, um, apparently. <laughs> I just wonder how they find it. Like, is that that first unfortunate goal? <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. or making that putt. Right. You know? Um, oh, my God. I just, I, but, I mean, just picturing, and it's like, what the hell is going on out there? I, I just, well, actually, no, maybe <laughs> what it is is that someone really. You know, uh, it, it's, uh, the, uh, it's what they do through the new groundskeeper. You know, wherever they get a yeah. person, you have to go clean the shit. <laughs> <laughs> the initiation. The initiation is the shit cleaning. Shit initiation. Nice. Like yes. So, um, really quick, I thought this was, and I don't know how I bumbled onto this, you guys. Oh, wait, this is the makeup. I have way too high constant lines on the website sometimes. Yeah, okay, good. I feel better. Yeah, so, um, Pornhub is, is a porn site out there, and they wanted to kind of break down, they wanted to get some market data on who was out there looking at porn, and I was 
really surprised at some of the things that they found. They did this uh, survey uh, in conjunction with BuzzFeed, and lesbian is far and away the top viewed category among female users, and then women, 445% more likely than men to search for girl on girl. Now, what they're saying is, if they're straight women, a lot of them are straight women, which is what is so interesting about this. And um, so they're talking about, there's a sex uh, therapist that was uh, commenting on the, uh, on, on the whole thing. And she says, you know, um, it's, they're looking for good sex. They're just looking for, you know, something that they wouldn't necessarily do, but they, the more thoughtful things, because regular porn that's male, female, generally mm -hmm. seems to be more centric around the men and kind of ex experience. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a little more, you know, explicit. It's, it definitely still, I mean, it's getting a lot better. I mean, there's a lot of female point of view, you know, films out there. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, it's still a, you know, male warrior sort of thing. And, <laughs> and it's probably also, you know, a really good thing. Hey, I can put this in my toy anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's a few things, like, I know that, you know, if I were watching porn, I'm much more interested in, like, what was sex scenes, like a guy going down the throne and, like, mm -hmm. I want a bunch of jobs and facials and whatever. Like, I'd rather just see them someone So that way, you, that's, that's a lot of that. You know, and honestly, oh, I hate to tell it to guys, but like, kind of sex are kind of funny looking. They're not necessarily all that attractive. You don't have to go get surgery to fix them or anything, but I don't necessarily want to look at a bunch of dudes. Really? Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't do much, so I totally get it. I mean, that's why I, mean, I think you know, a lot of guys are looking at it too. And if you're gonna, and if, and if more women are beginning to go look at it, I think they're gonna be a lot more comfortable with that too. So I would be curious to see what what the survey says. Let's say ten years from now, when it's become even more ordinary mm -hmm. for women to be more visually stimulated. Yeah. You know, what they're what they're wearing into. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, I think too. I, I think that <laughs> let's just let's just be blunt here. I think that if we're watching, you know, like for example, lesbian porn, and let's just say that they probably are pretty skilled at whatever is going on, I think we're going to be going back and saying, <clears throat> "Hello," mm -hmm. you know, like instructional Take much. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. I can see yeah. that happening. Though I do kind of have the issue with the term lesbian porn because most girl on girl, they are not lesbians. Right. Yeah. yeah. Actual and lesbians don't enjoy watching them. <laughs> yeah. It's Actually, a lot, a lot of female uh, scenes and male-male scenes where people like, I mean, there are, there are, you know, uh, there are lesbian, uh, actual lesbian movies, there are gay male movies, but a lot of it is, uh, it, it's their job. And they just do. Mm -hmm. A lot of the gay male stars are straight, but you yes. do get paid so much money. What, what, what? Yeah, guys get paid nothing to do porn. Women get way more money. Um, so a lot of guys, will, straight men will do the gay porn because they get paid a lot more than they would to do straight. No kidding. I did not know that. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, it's, it, it's an industry. It's a job. Yeah. yeah and and the different pay scales and what's going on. I, you know, I suppose that makes sense when you say it out loud, but it never would have occurred to me. Um, one more quick thing here before we get into it. There's some really interesting discussion topics out today. But good old Macy Gray. Where's she been lately, right? Yeah, so different. I mean, she is just unique. Um, well, she has come out with a new song, which, Meg, you're going to put it up, right, mm -hmm. on, on the Great Northern Sex Cast um, page. And it, the animation looks like our logo. But it's a, it's a love song for her vibrator. And it's called Bob, battery-operated boyfriend. Yes. And it's hilarious. It's cute. It's a really cute song. I'm not even kidding you. She's, um, she's just talking, too, about, like, you know, you can stop when you want. And, you know, there's kind of some female empowerment undertones to it, but um, it was really good to hear her singing again, you know? So check it out the on our website. It's actually really good. It's like a fun, like, kind of doo wop yeah. happy. Yeah. yeah. Now, is it fairly obvious? I mean, is it going to be a parental uh, advisement board going insane over the song, or is it, because uh, I, it's, well, they're not playing it on the radio, so I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how, yeah, I don't know too many stages. I'm not sure it shows up probably on satellite radio somewhere. Okay. It's, like it's kind of vague. It's a little veiled. I mean, she says battery operated boyfriend. Mm -hmm. She says sex, and she says, and the video is cute. It's it's animated little, you know, it's a it's a dildo, and mm -hmm. it's bouncing around and dancing and doing all sorts of adorably dildo-y 
weeks, but um, it's it's just. But her the song is like catchy as heck. Yeah, it is. So okay. you gotta. Y- it is. You gotta you gotta um, be checking that out. So um, Macy Gray, good to hear her voice again. So yeah, Colleen, um, we have reached out um, to a couple of different uh, specialists, and we are um, waiting. Summertime is kind of tough. Well, everyone's okay. Yeah. And um, we're, we're getting some sexual health instructors and experts, actually. We want to come in and talk about some of the other things. I mean, we love the funny stuff. We love crapping in golf cups and <laughs> whatever. But, you know, some of this stuff is, you know, pretty serious. And it really does affect all of us, especially people, you know, that have kids. And the CDC came out with, um, they did a three-year um, sort of survey uh, based on interviews with about 2,000 people aged 15 to 19. And um, the numbers that they're showing about using the use of the morning after pill um, is really quite stunning. Or I, I thought they were, I want to see kind of what you guys think. So what they're saying is uh, 44% of never married female teenagers and 40%, 47% of never married male teenagers had had sex at least once, which is way down from 60% for the uh, boys and 51% for the girls back in the 80s. The AIDS scare drove down the sexual activity. So sexual activity overall has um, come down quite a bit. Um, but what they're saying is that they are showing that the use of the morning after pill has risen steadily um, when it was 1 in 12. And they're saying now it's 1 in 4. Education. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, there, uh, there isn't too much that they can't find anymore, and so they're, they're uh, they, they know what the consequences are. They know that if you if, if, if they've just followed their, their bodies instead of their brains, they know that there's a, a way to take care of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can Google anything. Mm-hmm. You know, and so, it, or, you know, uh, so I, I can see that, you know, it, and, I'm, and I'm sure that the you know, pregnancy rate is probably way down, too. Mm-hmm. Because they can take, you know, they, they have they have knowledge. Mm-hmm. The only thing concerning about that is I hope people aren't using the more after as contraception. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, well, it also didn't exist. I mean, it technically right. it existed 30 years ago in the 80s, but all it was was a uh, big, uh, uh, you just went and got birth control pills and, you know, chucked like 12 of them down your cup. Right. Now they put it in like one or two pills. That's basically all that. <laughs> yeah, it is essentially. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there there are still there are still um, uh, doctors that will prescribe uh, birth control pills and tell you how to take it versus going in and getting the Plan B, which you can get over the counter. Because someone still doesn't want to answer that. Right. Well, it was 2006 actually was when 18 and older could buy it over the counter, um, and then um, that was starting in 2006, and it was two years ago that they lifted the age limits, making it wildly. Available, and that's that was the thing that concerned because I just I don't think that that's probably good for you to no. do. Well, you know, it doesn't repeatedly. protect against diseases. And yeah, I know. I've actually had to. I took it twice, and I felt a really sick. Really, both times that I took because it's such a massive dose. It's a super pill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so much hormones. I was really sick both times. I, you know, it's really funny because although teenagers. Brains aren't done. Mm-hmm. You know, they still, you know, they still think that having access to information as of that is certainly better than an unintended pregnancy mm-hmm. or a uh, or a, or just just what happens pretty much if you have a kid when you're not prepared to have a kid, and I don't care what age you are, because it's you're going through there and just you don't know what relationship that person has with their family. So being able to get it, I mean, I just I. I, I, I'm not going to look outside, you know, I know what happens in, you know, my family, your family's over there, and I can't make a decision for you that mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. And it's just, you know, so, have, you know, it has more to do with education. They know what's going on. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the question that I guess I would have for, for you, Colleen, as a parent of a teenager, it's like, you know, they're, they're so afraid, and your house is going to be a little bit different than a lot of others, I realize, because you've just got so much more awareness and, and and openness about things, you know, but it's like, yeah, how do you get them over that hump of going to more drastic measure such as that, like what she said that made you really sick, Meg, when you took it, um, to, to, to doing the things on the front end to where they don't find themselves in that position. I mean, that's going to be tough. No, yes. Some will, some won't. You just, you don't know. I mean, there, there is, there is no 100% for anything. And I think that's what people sometimes get really, really up on that just because it may not work a few times, mm-hmm. you know, or it may not work the way you want to, doesn't mean you can't help any other people. Mm-hmm. You know, everyone looks for that perfect solution. 
Mm -hmm. There's no such freaking thing. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, can something be, you know, and then and then sometimes when something's working a little bit, you know, and then you offer that like a change, like, you know, maybe this would make it better or this is that, you know, and then they, they cling to something too, maybe too long. Yeah. And, and because they're once again they're just looking for everyone's looking for perfect and there's no such thing. And that's what so just it, more options, more you know, just it's, so you can figure out what works for you. It's kinda of sad, I'm wondering if some of it's not that now that they've done turn to a lot of abstinence only, it might be easier for kids to get their hands on the morning after mm -hmm. than it is on condoms. Because right. If you, because that way, they, it's like if you buy the condom, then somehow you've done something wrong. Right. Well, and there's the age limit on the condoms, and if people aren't giving them away, you know, when I went to school, we need to go to, you could go to the nurse's office and get them for free, I think. I still I think you should be in the Minneapolis school system. I know they have a a school clinic and, and all that sort of job. Really? Uh, but it's yeah, because that if you if you tell someone uh, no and then they screw up, there's only you know and, and, and they have a plan for it, you know, plan for the occurrence and there's only one option afterwards. Yeah. yeah and if you tell you know, if you tell if you give them education, you know, that hopefully they will make a better choice. And they may not. Yeah. But at least they have the for sure. I don't know. It's just, it's what's sad about that whole thing and is like, you know, you've got some parents saying, well, I don't want condoms available at school free for my kid. Now you're usurping my control over what happens in my house and my family. And unfortunately, I don't see those arguments and those two sides of the spectrum coming together anytime soon. Do you? No. no. <laughs> unfortunately. No, we're, yeah. I mean, people are way too hung up on what they would like to happen versus reality. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so speaking of sex education, that's 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 been things where, where different factors of society have been at loggerheads for years, and um, there's a kind of an interesting situation at Florida Atlantic University, and they've made some news, and it kind of folded into this, so I wanted to throw it out here. So what they want to do um, is they want to try to comply with federal law that requires a certain amount of education to raise awareness um, and hopefully prevent campus sexual violence, right? Mm -hmm. Get that down. And they're all required to offer some sort of an educational thing well, that they have to require students to do, okay? okay so Everybody. I haven't said what this thing is, so there's, you know, okay. So de the schools are defining it in their, their own ways. So what they decided to do is require this online course that contains, and you can't, if you don't do this and answer these questions, you cannot register for your classes, okay? Some of the questions in the survey that they have to answer are, let me give you a couple of them. How many times have you had sex, including oral, in the last three months? With how many different people have you had sex, including oral, in the last three months? If you had sex, including oral, in the last three months, how many times had you used a condom? And the course is called, think about it, it's like, I don't know, I feel like they could probably teach guys not to rape girls and girls not to be victims without making them have to cough up who they did what with and how many times. I don't know. Who says you got to tell the truth? Just put zero. Well, I think I would be. I think I would be super offended. I mean, I was. Yeah, really, yeah, I'm saying, is it really? You know, it's, I mean, I, would you rather take a survey online, or would you rather sit in a class with a crap load of other freshmen and take the same class? I mean, you're not going to get anything out of that survey. Right. That's, I guess that's what I'm confused, confused about. I mean, what is, is, there, is I mean, is there stuff? You know, after the survey, what are they? What do they get from it? Do they, is, your, is, is your information, if you answer one way or another, do, you know, is your stuff like, did you know that this happens? Or this, I mean, I, you know. Yeah, I, I couldn't get into the just, actual, just, I just lost the snippet. Just lie. Who cares? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is not what I was expecting, but that's cool. Yeah, that's I, don't, I, don't understand. I don't, I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, I mean, once again, everyone's waiting for perfect, a perfect way to tell someone not to rape. They haven't figured it out. They're only just figuring out you get to tell people not to rape versus to tell people this is how you don't get raped. So they're gonna, yeah. and things are going to be clumsy. Yeah. Yeah. But sex, sex is clumsy in this country. Incredibly clumsy. You know, and this is just one aspect of it. So just lines. Click, click, click. You know, you know, make, you know just go A, B, C, D. Who cares? Yeah. You know, but here's a question though for you guys. I mean, we're we hear, we're hearing about campus sexual violence a lot. It, it's I don't. It, it's probably being talked about more. It's probably hasn't changed much in, over the years. But the question that I've always had about that kind of thing is if a guy is willing to push in that situation, 
it's like, okay, you think about rapists that are out on the street that grab random women and, and rape them or, you know, whatever mm-hmm. that would look like. And you think of that being a category of an actual criminal. This stuff that's going on on campuses, are, is it the same exact thing? Or is there sort of this gray area out there in society where somebody can go from one side of being normal to cross into that zone, not going all the way to the typical sex offender that we're used to thinking of? You know what I'm saying? No, it, it, it is, okay, the law has already said that there's a whole bunch of different graduations of mm-hmm. sexual assault. There's, you know, all, all there's felonies, there's misdemeanors, there's all sorts of stuff. So yeah. we've already cited mm-hmm. that you know, a whole array of offenses are, are in different levels. But, I, you know, but the, the, the rarity of someone grabbing them on the street is the boogeyman that everybody has. Mm-hmm. And so they haven't looked at spousal abuse or friend um, friend rape or, you know, getting drunk at a, at a friend. Mm-hmm. And that has more to do with, you know, and I think that person and the person on the street are exactly the same. The one person just has more access. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's going through. But like I said, we've already, you know, the court system and we've already agreed that there's all sorts of, um, you know, there's a whole bunch of different graduations, you know, first degree, second degree, misdemeanor, felony, all this sort of things, aggravated, you know, special circumstances. Hey, they're already, I mean, that's already been established. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, I mean, you you see that, and they, I mean, Law and Order loves to make episodes out of stories like this. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, that's like one of the, they do that once every month, I think, at least. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it is a strange phenomenon that, can you educate somebody out of the tendency to... Well, I think it's going to take a couple of generations so that a certain segment, segment of the population does not feel entitled to other people's bodies. Yeah. And, you know, that it's, it, it is a true sense of entitlement that you're not allowed to say no, that you've been brought up that you're supposed to act one way and other people are supposed to act another way. And you know, if someone says no to you, then it's some sort of personal affront. Yeah. And it, 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 is, it, is, it, is, it is a centuries old thing. Not, yeah. just, not just us, not just modern society. I mean, centuries old, multiple um, displays. And, and the fact that, you know, it's taken 10,000 years of civilization to finally get to the point where someone goes, wait a minute here. <laughs> yeah. Nobody has a right to anybody else's body. Yeah. I mean, grandma does not have a right to force someone them if they don't want to, someone doesn't want to be touched, they don't want to be touched. Yeah, yeah. You know, to, the, the fact that you were, that you were, you know, that you are responsible for your own thing, and yet, yeah, that sounds amazingly radical to, to some people, that someone would have control over their own personal being from someone else. Yeah, yeah well, you know, it, it was really, you know, we think of this stuff as being, you know, criminal or something like that, if, you know, some of the worst cases, in my opinion, in history of horrific sexual behavior, if you will, was literally how women were traded like horses, particularly among the, the powerful, mm-hmm. the people in power. I mean, they were literally, you know, sold and, um, you know, to cut deals and everything else. I mean, you know, if you watch all those, you know, the series, the Borgias is really particularly disgusting and, and, sh- and portraying that. Yeah, I mean, that, that's horrible. And, and, the, and the fact that, you know, it is not just women. I mean, men, you know, are you know, are being told to act a certain way, and then they don't understand why it's right. So they're, you know, they're harmed that way too. Mm-hmm. Just going through there, or the fact that there's still, you know, you know, modern, you know, that, that everyone, you know, at a young age doesn't know that their own body is theirs. Mm-hmm. You know, it's going through there. It just, yeah, it's not a new thing. It just, it, but it does seem pr- rather radical when someone comes and says, "Wait a minute, yeah, <laughs> this space is mine." Yeah. If you don't want to come into my space, and, you know, the fact that the other person is supposed to respect that. Yeah. Is, yeah. 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 Well, it's interesting. I mean, we've been battling that particular issue for s- such a long time, you know, through, I mean, throughout the millennia, Colleen, mm-hmm. as you yeah. as you mentioned, and taking a couple generations. That said, you know what makes me wonder is, like, with all the, now the, um, and I don't, I don't mean to portray this in a negative sense, but the ambiguity with gender definition now that we have, is becoming more mainstream, you know, and, and and transgender and transsexual and all that other kind of stuff. I wonder if, with that, if the acceleration of any of this is possible, or if they even go hand in hand at all. Do I think blurring gender lines is going to destroy gender stereotypes, mm-hmm. which is can lead to a lot of rape? Um, because I actually do think there's kind of a difference of 
the guy for the frat boy at the party who is like, oh, she's drunk, she loves it, you know, whatever, versus the serial rapist that, you know, the boogeyman, as you say, that yeah. people on the street where they're the the frat guy is. It, it's um, it's an uh, opportunity and not respect respecting women, whereas um, you know the boogeyman. It's it's an act of violence. Like rape is an act of violence, not yeah. lust or passion. Or, and a lot of those people are, are mentally unstable, and that you can't fix. But the idea that there isn't this huge difference in the roles of different genders. Um, I think you know, understand. Yeah. Well, you are a woman, but that doesn't mean that I can just that you're there for me to put my dick in whenever I want to. Right. Of what you say. Well, think about it. We didn't even talk about you know female rape until the Mary Kay Letourneau stuff uh, with the student, the teacher, student, the famous mm -hmm. one most famous and now we see it it seems like all the time it took us a long time to even say hey that's not all right yeah and again yeah that it is perfectly you know capable of a gentleman to be sexually assaulted to the rape or that, that that it's not just hey you know that that, that 14 year old uh, you know boy got lucky by like, you know screwing the teacher no mm -hmm. no he was he was assaulted yeah but that, that was wrong. that's what yeah. they used to, to say, say. Yeah. yeah like lucky yeah. him no. right well they, they just did a Sixty, sixty, or they just had like a, um, you know, twenty years later. Where are they now? And guys, it's messed up. Like, does he? Yeah, it is not a healthy. It was not a good thing. Like, go bro, you have to have sex. It was like she messed you up. Like, yeah, kind of it's creepy. Yeah, it's completely creepy. So, um, let's lighten it up just a little bit, shall we? I want to see if you guys agree. <laughs> now I was all depressed. Um, if you guys agree or disagree, I found this um, seven things you should never do before or after sex. And I want to see if you guys agree <laughs> with these things. Uh, crap in a golf hole? What well, that, 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 that would be, that yeah. That's a mood killer. That's a mood killer. <laughs> Number one was don't rush out of bed to use the bathroom. Okay, and what they're saying is, you know, you might have heard that you should pee immediately after sex to avoid a UTI, but a little bit's not going to make that big of a difference. This is a professor at Baylor that's explaining, um, and she says, really, you know, you're not going to be necessarily on fire between your legs if you take the time to sit and snuggle for a few minutes. Plus, it's more polite. What do you guys think? If you pee, you gotta... <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, I understand where they're going through there. It's, I mean, if you don't have to pee, don't go force yourself. If that's what they're talking about, that's fine. Because, you know, if you're taking that to heart, that you need to flush out to make sure you don't get a UTI. But if you've got to pee, you've got to pee. Well, and it is. And it is. And it's sticky. You can clean yourself up a bit, right? <laughs> Snuggling is no fun. It's they're going to, like, stick together. Yeah. And, then, yeah. and besides, you can either go clean yourself up or change all the sheets on the bed. So really, which one do you want? To do? <laughs> because which one's going to be a little bit more of a moon killer, honey? Really, we're, we gotta we gotta strip the old bed and put on the new sheets and, and do all this sort of stuff. And while we're at it, we'll just rub this down, put it in the washer. No, no, no just get a piece of tape. <laughs> <laughs> I never know what I'm gonna get. You guys are definitely a box of chocolates, that's for sure. When it comes to this sort of thing, um, number two, uh, don't finish the bottle of wine. They're talking about before or after sex. Um, and they're saying, hey, it might put you in the mood, but too much can make it unsatisfying. Um, one study said that 11% of alcohol users reported problems achieving orgasm. Uh, and men, compared with non-drinkers, men who drank had a harder time ejaculating, and women needed to be stimulated more in order to climax. And it says that basically your naughty bits get depressed too. By yeah, it is depressing and it's going to make you tired. I don't drink wine because I'm allergic to it, so I don't know. So I can have a chance to don't, don't finish the bottle of vodka. And that I can, you know, I can because I'm just going to go sleep. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I'm already suspect of this list just because I feel like everyone's so different. Like, there's a few people in the office I know that would say, no, finish three bottles of wine. <laughs> it makes things more fun. Well, can I just say, if you have part of a bottle of wine that got you into bed, what's wrong with finishing it after? I mean, yeah. come on, man. Right. So. I actually, I know very few people here <laughs> sitting around. You crack open a bottle of wine, you're drinking a bottle of wine. Right. I, 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 you know, you that, you're like doing it wrong. You know, <laughs> it's just a little tiny bottle. I did have one guy that would, he, 
he would drink too much and I'd be out at the bars and I'd remind him and I'd be like, okay, this is your limit because I need you functional when we get home. <laughs> functional, I love it. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful thing. Um, well, the, the third one is kind of interesting. It talks about avoid or assume this particular position. It talks about elevating your pelvis after and they're like, hey, be careful with that because it can boost your chances of conceiving. It'll help the sperm travel um, to the cervix quicker. So that's that's a personal choice. That's just either way. Okay, this one grossed me out. This one really grossed me out. <clears throat> Don't let him skip his pre-sex shower. And they're talking about uncircumcised partner. They're like, nope, go go clean the foreskin. Okay, um, if you have to tell him, you. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's we're, to me, if we're already on the verge of that, and we don't know if that foreskin is clean. I'm sorry. What are you doing? There. <laughs> yeah, that seems like, oh, by the way, we're going to want to be live letters, so let's continue breathing. I mean, I don't know, basic bodily cleanliness seems. <laughs> if you're not there already. I, I fully support this one. Yeah. <laughs> this one is 100%. But I'm just saying, if you got to tell them, if you got to tell them. Um, the next one, don't have a big dinner. Um, and they're talking about, you know, healthy foods, particularly legumes and veggies. Gaseousness. Oh, no, no, you just, yeah, you, you can't have the food coma. Oh, my, you're just like, uh, <laughs> Just a couple of beached whales. <laughs> <laughs> Not sexy. No, 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 I mean, it, just really, if, if you're going to go out and just know you're going to have food, just have the sex beforehand. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, yeah. yeah or, you're, or, or you're going to need plenty of time, or you're just going to be waiting for, like, morning sex. Because <laughs> there's two... Okay. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm all about avoiding the gaseous explosions myself. Um, you're going to love these next two. Don't put sex toys away without thoroughly cleaning them. Yes. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know if you're going to jump immediately out of bed, but no, you want those suckers clean. That's all there is to it. And you guys have a lot of really yeah. good cleaners, too. Yeah, and a lot of them, if they want to, so take them into the shower with you. Yeah. You know, a, a lot of the stuff, you know, and make sure And then you want them dry before you come away. You don't want them touching. Um, uh, you know, you can wrap it in some fabric, or we sell, so we sell um, individual bags that you can wrap the stuff in. Because you, you want, you want that. Yeah, because you don't want to put it like in a ziplock either, probably, especially some of the silicone stuff, right? Yeah, no, you don't want just a, a nice non-lit, a lit-free cloth to wrap, okay. to wrap the stuff in. Still really just, stuff around. Yeah, I just imagine if you, you're like, oh, whatever, I'll clean it later. And then you're not going to remember that it's dirty until you're in the moment wanting to bust it out for the next encounter. And you're like, oh, right. <laughs> yeah, see, that's that's like, going to kill the movie. Yeah, that, that's a definite, yeah, crusty toy, killer, that's all there is to it. Well, ew, I mean, once it gets to that point, how do you, oh, okay, never mind. Okay, this last one cracks me up. This is a good one, too. Um, and the show. Uh, don't use a lubricant that includes menthol. Do we really have to say that out loud? <laughs> well, men, actually, we have quite a few of cooling and tingling and warming and stuff like that. So I would say that if you're going to use a lube that's a warming or a cooling one, that you want to test it out a little bit beforehand, you do not crack it out, squeeze the hell all over yourself before you go on board because you don't know how you're going to react. It's kind Everyone's of like one's different, so you're going to want to be very, you know. You definitely want to test a little bit of these things, around, which is one of the reasons we started carrying really smaller models of lube. Because, you know, you don't want it to, if, if, it gets, if you've cracked it open and you knock it over, you don't want to feel like you've, you know, you've wasted too much. You want to know if you like the flavor, you want to know if you like how this works. And you can always go back and get more. Because if you invest in a really expensive, and there's $50, $75 large models of lube, and you just say you don't like it. Yeah. No, you know. Okay. You better have a lot of squeaky doors or something. Like this. <laughs> oh my God! That's... <laughs> part of the conversation. Let's put it on the door handle. We we there isn't anyone in the office that hasn't cracked out about uh, gone and grabbed one of the sample bottles of silicone lube to uh, grease a hinge on a door or a counter. Oh really? Um, I've got a weed sprayer at the office. I couldn't get the cap loose on. <laughs> I went and got some when I finally got it open. That's awesome. So there's a lot of lot of different uses for your lube. It works great, folks. Give me yeah. a shot. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have, a, I mean, samples at the stores? Like, 
pretty, yeah, pretty much all of the moves uh, and the flavor lotions and stuff like that do have a little sample you can put a little bit on your on your hand. Um, you know, see how it feels, testers, stuff like that. So okay. you can see what's going through there. And uh, I've, um, I need to update a little bit because we've uh, dropped one line, brought in another line. It's really that part of the poster. But it has some sort of idea of the viscosity and the flavor and the stickiness and all that sort of stuff. And, and I'm all at, I tested all of it. So it's all one point of view on the poster. Okay. You know, because some people might say they'll well, taste it and they'll meddle at all or this or that. And we tell people, like, one person tested it, it is fairly, you know, I try to be as unsubjective as possible, but still it's my taste buds mm -hmm. and it's my nose. And I have an insanely sensitive nose. So it's, you know, most people aren't going to smell what I smell. So I, I really feel it. But it, it, I can manage about three or four of them before I'm just over, the taste buds are overwhelming, especially if they're um, uh, some of the ones that are, if they're not meant to be edible, but you should, someone still wants to know what it tastes like because mm -hmm. you could, you know, too metal. Yeah. <laughs> or, so, yeah, I, yeah. So you see the poster in the store? Yeah, that be testing. That's amazing. That is, that's actually very useful. That's really cool. So good, you know. So guys, um, we do um, have uh, coming up in the near future um, a, a recurring guest. We're going to have Mrs. Sin back on. <laughs> We're just hammering down which week she's coming in. <laughs> and so that's going to be a do not miss episode. We'll find out what's going on in the summer swinging community here. And I'm sure a great deal more if it's anything like the last time she was here. So we will look forward to that. And um, check us out on Facebook. We'll play, uh, post the Macy Gray thing. Megan Vaughn, thank you. Colleen, we'll be back next week. And maybe I'll have more veggies for you, too. Ooh. Okay. Have a great week.